All right, guys, welcome to a new episode of the Type 1 Lifting Podcast. I have a returning guest. Um, actually, she hasn't been on the show for over a year, which is crazy to think that. Uh, Paige Semenza, <laughs> how are you doing? I'm good. I'm doing well, Tom. How are you? No, no, no complaints. Uh, I know we were just talking before the podcast of like what's kind of going on and like AI, chat, GPT and all that stuff. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's um, it's it's kind of crazy to think like I haven't talked like I that podcast I did with you was like a year ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot is kind of a lot has a little bit changed a little bit. But um, I do want to talk about Wadapalooza a little bit before before anything. So because I know you went individual and you did team as well. Yeah. So that was kind of a when they first announced that I was I was right away super interested in going uh, individual again. Mm -hmm. um, and then they announced the team and I was like, like the first person I thought of was Caroline. I'm like, why don't we go down as a team? And because she was <laughs> considering not doing individual. And well, I was like, well, let's go have some fun. So um, our original plan was to have uh, Kelly Clark. So all now known as Kelly Kelly. Um, <laughs> yeah, to try to because you know, she's been following misfit. She was mm -hmm. with uh, working with Hunter all last year. So we're like, well, let's get to know her. Let's, you know, let's just go have some fun a couple, a couple of misfits. Um, and she was going through like a little bit of a nagging injury that she was trying to rehab and didn't want to risk anything at Wadapalooza. So mm -hmm. uh, we got like a, a older misfit at the time, uh, Aaron O'Donnell. So she ended up coming on the team with us pretty last minute. So we were super lucky and Aaron's awesome to be around. So we had a lot of fun at Wadapalooza. Yeah. Um, it, in having teams of three be, you know, a ton of games level athletes and veterans in the sport. Like it was just, it was competitive for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but it was fun to, to be up in the top 10 with everybody and, you know, just kind of shoot the shit, so to speak. Right. Like, just yep. you know, compete, have some fun and have like no pressure, no strings attached. Yeah. So did you, do you like the way they do it now for like the two days for individual and two days team? Um, I won't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to just that ask was, that. Yeah, it was way too much volume for me. Uh, the amount of like squatting and just the movements program that the workouts were just the programming in general was just a little too much volume in for two days. And especially mm -hmm. because like, you know, you have $75,000 on the line and you're splitting it up between two days instead of like, over the length of a, a weekend where you can really test overall fitness. Um, I didn't love that about it, but I think for the team aspect of it, you know, you take the pressure off these athletes and let them have fun. And for a lot of them, that's, you know, you can really see some true potential come out um, and give the fans, you know, a great spectating show to be at. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if like, I love going down to Wadapalooza. I love the weather. Um, I hate the unpredictability of the weather yeah. and how it can just <laughs> like change the schedule up so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not really sure if I'm going to go again next year. I've done it a few times and, you know, I kind of want to travel a little bit more. So we'll see, you know, what's in the cards for next year. But there's kind of one step at a time right now. So semifinals is obviously the only thing in my like line of sight right now. Yeah. So when, when you're down at Wadapalooza, so how does it work? Do you kind of like get your own room or do you like, you know, have a bunch of people with you to kind of hang out and like, you know, how, how and like even feed, even like, you know, feeding too is like, how does that all work? Yeah. So this year actually was a ton of fun. Um, Jen with Misfit found this penthouse that had four bedrooms. So it was myself and Ben, my boyfriend, and then Aaron and her boyfriend, Caroline came down by herself this year and then Drew, our coach, mm -hmm. um, came. So we each had our own room in this like awesome penthouse. It was part of a, a Hilton hotel. Okay, um, cool. So yeah, so we like, that was perfect. If I could have my own room, my own like bathroom, <laughs> yeah. and then there's just a giant kitchen. Um, like I love having a little bit of privacy, but then also people to just kind of like ease the tension of competing. So um I very much like that. Like that is perfect for me. Um, being in a hotel room by myself, I don't love that as much. Um, as if there's a kitchen, I'm okay. But it's always nice to have people around because it just, you know, you lose the tension, you laugh, you goof around and whatnot. So um, even with going down to semis this year, like 
I'll stay with my parents and then there's two other people coming down staying with us but um, we each have like our own bedroom bathroom and just a way to you know when it's time to go to bed I can get away and yeah. have my privacy yeah so does so, Ben does Ben snore he does not no I'm pretty <laughs> lucky um, you, you are very and, lucky yeah well he sleeps like a rock too so his work schedule uh, he is up at 4 30 every morning like clockwork, he'll get up, shower, eat breakfast, and he's at work by 6 a.m. Um, ideally, like in a perfect world, he gets home at six, but a lot of times it's pushed back to 6.30 or seven. So he works really long days. And I'm sure that there are, you know, really long, hard days. Mm -hmm. So when it comes time to going to bed, he sleeps like a rock and he, he doesn't like move. He doesn't like, <laughs> he's not a heavy breather. He just, he sleeps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for me, I, uh, so I had two deviated septums got, they, they got them fixed. And so, and I still snore so bad. Like the, <laughs> the ENT, the ENT doctor was like, yeah, you might need the inspire. Like, that? so it's like this, like, it's like a pewter, like it's a square. It's, I don't know, probably like the size of this mouse or something like that, that goes on your chest. And there's one wire that goes in the muscle of your chest and the other one wraps around the nerve around where your tongue is because i guess what happens is when you snore your tongue relaxes and it falls back and that's when you snore yeah. so the nerve that goes around that that causes that it's an electrical stimulation to push the tongue forward and so oh, like wow and so literally like you'll have that thing in your chest and then you'll have this like it's almost like a remote control and you just like press it over um you press it over your chest and it just turns on and you have like it's like a 10-year um I think it's a 10 year like battery life on the thing. Jesus. <laughs> that I, does not I don't sound have it. fun. Yeah. I don't, I don't have it. I don't have, I, I have enough gear on me already for my like glucometer and all that stuff. I'm like my, right. and like the, even the ENT said, listen, if you get this, it will show on your chest. Like there will be a piece of it. Like it will stick out. Like, on, wow. Yeah. And so, so you just have like this little square box in your chest. Yeah, pretty much. And so my wife, my wife's like, I don't, I don't know if I like that. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, I mean, so I literally sleep in the spare bed, spare bedroom because I, I, I snore so bad. It's like, even on Not vacation, even plugs can help her out. No, yeah. no, it doesn't even work. Like, so what I use, if we go out on, on a trip, it's usually, I put mouth tape on and like, literally I have to, sh I, I have to be clean shaven. I have to put a mouth, like mouth tape on that covers the whole mouth and then a nose strip. And like what? And, so and you not, can breathe. Yeah, yeah. And it's not like the typical like small ones. It's the extra strength ones, where it's just like <laughs> almost like your full size of your nose, just to try to like you know open up your whole you know nasal cavity. <laughs> you probably are a great sight when you're oh, yeah. sleeping. It probably yeah. looks really good. <laughs> oh, it's, it's even it's even better when I wear an, I I wear a night mask because when I used to work. <laughs> So what I, what I used, yeah, exactly. So I, so I used to work nights at the hospital and so I would sleep and I didn't have anything to cover yeah. my face because like the sun was rising, like right where the window is. Yeah. And so I started wearing t-shirts and then my wife gave me these, these night masks and I can't take them off now. Yeah. Is it like the one, I forget the brand of it. Um, it's like, is it like memory foam? And then it has like two eye yep. circles. Yep. Yeah. I and think it, I remember. It sticks out. Yeah. I remember Drew had mentioned that one like way back on a podcast a while ago. And I was like, I'm buying that because it sounds fantastic. <laughs> and I have that same exact one. And it's, it's fantastic. It's awesome. Like, it's so comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then, and then like earlier on when I, like, I, I think when we first moved to Georgia, I had like really bad eczema in my hands. And so I had to wear gloves at night too. And so like, literally I was just, a, I was just an absolute just mess. A puppet. I was just, oh like, I, and I was messing around. Like I had like the nose strip, the mouth tape and like the, 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 um, the eye, you know, the mask, and then I had the gloves. And so I crossed my hands like I was dead. I was like, <laughs> like a mummy. Yeah, pretty my much. Gosh. Yeah. And my wife took a picture and just posted on like social media. And I'm like, and like, I'm like, she's, I'm like, thanks. I'm like, thanks. Gotta I look, embrace it. Oh, I don't care, whatever. But, you know, it's just, you know, you know it is what it is. <laughs> so, uh, so speaking about sleeping, so do you have any like sleeping rituals that you do at all or? Um, not really. We, like we don't really watch tv in our bedroom we don't do anything like that like we won't even put movies on up there so like the bedroom is pretty much just for sleeping um i'll read before bed sometimes not all the time um but we like 
usually are just pretty like spent by the end of the day. And it's Mm -hmm. like, I don't really have trouble falling asleep very often. Um, So nothing like I don't drink beam every night. I'm not like, you know, (laughs) into all that. I have it, but it's just not, I don't know. It's just sometimes I feel more restless when I drink beam. So I've tried playing around with that and I stopped actually a little while ago because I was like consistently feeling restless. And I was like, this doesn't, this doesn't seem to be doing what it's supposed to do for me. So I just kind of stopped doing that. Um, But no, like we get home by the time Ben gets home and we have dinner, it's like eight, eight 30. We'll maybe watch a little bit of a TV show and then we try to get up to bed. So it's kind of nice that he has to be up early because he'll want to go to bed earlier. Mm -hmm. So for me, if I'm in bed by nine and I can get a full eight to nine hours in bed, like, that's perfect, especially right now with how high volume is and all that. So, um, yeah, it's not not too much of a a routine, really. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I get up at four to go train at the gym. So, yeah, it's, I don't know how you guys do it. And I and I go to bed at ten. So it's Ugh. like six. I don't. I, I have, would not survive. I, I have no choice. And like, granted, like I'm not really doing high volume stuff because I'm on the hatchet program, so it's a little little bit different. Yeah, so, you get to choose. Yeah, yeah, I get to I get to pick and choose. I, I I did the so so if anybody doesn't know the Misfit program, so um they have like you know the elite you know hatchet and then like masters and then like what is it like uh, Misfit anywhere pretty much on the yeah on the app. I don't really know if we use that very much anymore though um, yeah I think they kind of got rid of that and we'll just add some modifications into like the hatchet program yeah. And so this one that like you could pick like three for the hatchet, you could pick three to four uh, workouts dur- for like your session at the gym. And it could be like endurance. It could be strength. It could be all around. And so I pick, I picked the all around because I need help all around. So <laughs> <laughs> except for like lifting heavy, but it's still, it's just like, yeah, it's, it's a definitely good pro. If anybody doesn't, hasn't tried it yet, they should definitely try Misfit. So yeah, I'm, I'm not biased or anything, but they are very, very well rounded in the programming and obviously you know i've been with them since 2018 so something's working yeah and uh and i know i know you're a coach there because Vic, i think vic is one of your cli- uh, clients yep he's one of my athletes i have three athletes right now that i work with nice um so, so go ahead so what is it like training with uh having vic as a as a you know athlete for you <laughs> Um, it took, so like, obviously I have the athlete side of it, right? I coach in an affiliate. So I coach people in person all the time. Um, but I wouldn't really say I coach anybody in person that is like pursuing this as wanting to get to semifinals or get to the games. Um, so like starting off as a remote coach was a a bit of a learning curve and he was my first. So, um, you know, he's kind of been along for that ride as well in, like we have a really good like report with each other. We have a good relationship. You know, we, in he puts in the work, like the guy shows up and he's, he's fun to work with. Um, he's not afraid to kind of open up and talk about things outside of the gym and inside of the gym. So, you know, we are just continuing to kind of chip away and chip away and chip away. And um, we've seen a ton of progress and we actually had a conversation about it uh, actually yesterday he had, yeah, he had sent me a message, you know, that he was talking with someone and they were telling him like, you know, you're not too far off of, you know, wanting to make that goal happen and wanting to make that dream happen. He's like, what do you think? And I was like, yeah, I think the guy is right. And I think a big part of it for someone like Vic is the belief that he can do it. Um, cause you know, when you haven't been at that, like when you haven't tasted it yet, you know, your, your mind can just constantly play tricks on you. You could feel like, um, you know, putting in the work isn't getting you where you want to go. Um, so I, you know, we kind of want to catch up on that a little bit. We haven't really fully gone back and forth, but it was something that he had messaged me and I was like, it's definitely worth a phone call to talk about. So, um, you know, it sounded like something kind of sparked in him and that's, that's exciting for me because, like when you can get an athlete to truly buy in to the programming and kind of trust that process and know that, you know, you're, you are the person kind of leading them and guiding them through. Um, it's a cool feeling. It's rewarding. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I see his story. I mean, he's part of the podcast too. So yeah. Uh, so he, uh, so I watch his stories and he's like, he, I mean, I mean, he's a shorter individual compared to me. So, mm -hmm. uh, but he can, he can deadlift and squat and like do clean. He can lift some heavy weights. It's, it's, yeah. it's impressive. It is. And it's just, you know, it's the technique side of it now. How do we kind of get all of that dialed in to, you know, transfer over to your clean, transfer over to your snatch. Like he's built a really good foundation. So, you know, it's just continuing to find those little things that we can be nitpicky about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the progress from when we first started though, like it's, it's impossible not to see it. So that's what makes me happy is I, I see he's still moving in the right direction. And that's obviously that's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. So you said you have three, three athletes that you, tr that you coach like online. Are you looking to do like any more coaching or is it kind of like not in your bandwidth right now? Yeah. So I, I took on three, I had two, um, before the games last year. And then I took on a third right after the games. Um, and it was kind of like, I want to test the waters and see how many I really can work with, mm -hmm. um, which during the off season and, you know, just kind of getting ready for the open and for quarterfinals, like it was pretty easy. Uh, but now that like my training has ramped up, I'm, you know, I'm still putting in hours at my, at, at our gym and coaching. And that, you know, is also another top priority of mine. Um, it's definitely more of a balancing act that I've had to try to kind of figure out. So, um, because I am, I'm that kind of person that like, if I'm going to do it, like, I want to give you all yeah. of me, like, I want to mm -hmm. give you like my hundred percent. I want to give you the attention that you deserve. Um, and it's hard to do that. And then, you know, give myself the attention that I deserve. So semifinals training, uh, really kind of ramped up. And like, I was talking to Caroline a couple like weeks ago when she first got back in after team, uh, team quarterfinals, she's like, um, so I'm just checking in to see how you're feeling because I've only done one day and I am wrecked. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> well, I did that one day last week and I've been sore ever since. So yeah. And at that point I was like, you know, I wish not that I don't love what I do right now, but if I was just focusing on training full time, not coaching, not doing remote coaching, like, that's kind of the attention that the training deserves right now. Mm -hmm. um, so having to balance it becomes a little stressful, um, but I wouldn't change it. Like I, I like having other purpose outside of like solely focusing on something that's for myself, which is training for the CrossFit games. Um, so that it's more of a motivation for me to work with others and inside the gym and remotely. So I, I definitely, can't not do it. I mean, mm -hmm. I can, but I don't know if I would enjoy my own training as much knowing that like, I'm solely focused on me. Yeah. It's just not the type of personality that I have. Yeah. So does Ben give you massages like every night since you're so sore all the time? <laughs> I wish <laughs> <laughs> I have to go to a professional for those. Oh, come on, um, Ben, Ben, come on. I you know. need to step it up, man. Sorry. <laughs> Hopefully he'll listen in. Yeah. He works long days too. He deserves a massage you know, kick his feet up. So yeah, but, no, but we, uh, it's, it's the lady that's more important. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, I'd say we have a pretty good balancing act right now. So, um, I give him a lot of credit. He works hard at, at work. We were just talking about it cause he's been having some, a few stressful days. So, yeah. you know, so what does he do for work? Him. So he is, an electrical engineer by trade. Oh, okay. And right now he works at a local like laundry, so, like laundromats place, like commercial, uh, regional style laundry plate, laundromat. I, I won't call it a laundromat, laundry service. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's called Dempsey's Linen. It's, uh, oh my gosh, why am I drawing a blank? Dempsey's Linen is as far as I can get right now because I'm having a brain <laughs> fart. Uh, Dempsey <laughs> Linen and Uniform. There we go. Um, so he is the uh, manager of the maintenance department there. So you're talking like, you know, obviously you have a washer and dryer at home. You're talking like a thousand bigger, times bigger. the size of that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the maintenance department is obviously the people that are responsible for keeping the machines up and running and all that good stuff. So he has... He, you know, is the manager of, of that 
group within the building Mm -hmm. um and they have to work with the production side of it too so making sure that production is getting out and all that so he's there when they open when the machines turn on um and he's pretty much like problem solving the rest of the day like i don't (laughs) think he's had a day like he'll i'll text him in the morning uh usually around like eight o'clock or so and i probably won't hear back from him until like two o'clock when he actually has time to sit down and breathe yeah so um he's pretty nonstop there so he comes home and like you know wanting to work out is hard and just finding a routine for that can be tough Mm -hmm. but we find ways yeah you gotta you gotta make it work somehow that's why i get up at four o'clock in the morning to work out right yeah if if that were him he'd be up at like three o'clock to work out Mm -hmm. so yeah so so my gym is open 24 hours yeah and That's so, pretty nice. Yeah, I, I, it's like I usually get there at like four thirty, and there's dudes like already sweating, and I'm like, how long? How long have you been here? <laughs> so. That's like, I mean, I follow The Rock on Instagram, and I know he's up. You know, it could be two a.m. and he's just getting home, and he's like, I gotta go in the Iron Paradise. Gotta go. Yeah, yeah. We actually have our garage is a fully decked out gym too. Like. Um, if we wanted to make it an affiliate, like it is, you know, we're pretty fortunate with all the, the equipment that we have. Um, it's just sometimes sleep is just way more important, <laughs> especially for him. Like, yeah, yeah. So, but on the weekends, like he'll train with me for the most part. So he definitely gets his fill in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He gets like the full week just on the weekends. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, sp- and right sp- now I was just going to say like right now, like, weekends are like so his days off are sunday and monday typically Mm -hmm. and i coach pretty much like the whole morning like first half of the day on monday uh i have like some classes that are just spread out that take up all that time and but sunday is like a work day for me like i'm training so like right now for us trying to get out and do things and kind of spend quality time together outside of work Mm -hmm. is really hard yeah. Um, just because, like I said, the volume is, is a lot, but I mean, right now it's worth it. And the progress that's happening right now, like the adaptations that are happening, like it's hard to, you know, say, no, I'm not going to do this training piece. Let's go out for lunch or something, you know? So, um, it's just that time of year. And like, we went through it last year. Not that we went through it. Like we, we managed things well. And, um, it's just a matter of us communicating and making sure that like, you know, we know what the end goal is here. And we know that at, you know, when that time comes, like all of this work and stress is worth it. Mm-hmm. So uh, what's your tra- training week like? So right now um, we are Tuesday, Wednesday, full on training days, Thursday, active recovery day, usually like a zone two or Maffetone session. Uh, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday is more of like a simulation for semis prep. So, mm-hmm. or for when we get to semifinals. Um, and then Monday usually is like a by feel. Sometimes I'll go swimming. Sometimes I will do something light in the garage. Um, or sometimes it's another mathetone session. Like it all kind of depends on the feel. Um, so last week was like hell week for us but uh, I had a little hiccup in training, so I didn't really get to participate. Um, So this weekend will be, you know, probably a little bit higher volume for me to try to simulate some more of that uh, semifinals feel. Yeah. 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 I I try to do the mafetones, but like typically if I sleep in, I don't work out. Like I, I, I I literally (laughs) get that. Yeah. I mean, I literally have a rogue echo bike, like right, like literally right. Like I'm looking right at it. And then I have (laughs) the Peloton bike, which is like, like I'm looking right at it too. And it's just like, I can just like go like on a phone call and just like go on like, you know, a zone two or like talk like, or just like do my recruiting job like on it. But I'm like, eh. Yeah. No, I totally get that. I mean, yeah. like, I feel like when you are consistently waking up at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m., like you are on on those days. And like when you get to get that little bit of sleeping in, you're like, you know, that's kind of some leisure time for you. Yeah. I mean, there's I been t- there's been times I go to bed at 10 and I wake up at like nine. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I yeah. do that, too. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and I'm like, I feel so bad. Like, my, like the kids are like up. My, my son's up at like six and he plays like so he goes over to like 
a room to play video games or like does whatever goes goes on his iPad. And then my daughter wakes up at like eight thirty, nine o'clock. But like typically, if it's like a Monday through Friday, she wakes up at like eight thirty. And so we're I'm, we're just like my wife and I are just praying that my son doesn't you know wake my daughter wake the daughter wake the, my daughter up like because he like jumps and like runs everywhere, and like <laughs> I so he he does this thing called the gritty. Have you ever seen it before? No. Oh, so it's the guys when like they, they they jump on like hop on like one leg and they do the dance and they go like this and they go. I, I um, no, I haven't seen oh, that. Geez. Or maybe so, I have and I just don't know. So what I it it's called? the gritty. So Justin okay. Jefferson does it. So I mean, I don't wanna, I don't have enough room back here. I can't do it. Actually, I might be able to. I might be able to do it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll see if I can do it. So he he literally just jumps. So he goes like this. He goes, hold on, like this. And okay. Just, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So he so he dances like that the whole time, and like he makes so much noise. It's insane. Stomps. Yeah, and like, but he does. He does. I mean, he's really good at it. So I mean, I'll give him. I'll give him that. But it's like, gosh, don't don't wake Sydney up. Don't wake Sydney. Like, don't do it. Please don't wake her up. And then all of a sudden, like, I'm ready about to bring him to school or something like that, or like, you know, bring him downstairs. She's like, Daddy, and I'm like, Oh, I was like, Okay. <laughs> Guess everyone's up. Does that mean that's just like kind of more work for you if the mm -hmm. two of them are up? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because the main thing is, is like. My wife's still sleeping. It's because I'm in the spare bedroom because I snore. So that's right. Uh, and so I try to like be like really quiet, like walking down this. And we got hardwood floors through like the whole like first floor. And it's like getting warmer out. So it's like the, the wood stretching. So like right. literally like every step I'm taking, you hear the creaking noises yeah. and stuff like that. And I'm just like, Ugh. and then Bennett's like screaming or like running. But I, th I think he has ADD or something like that, but he's like sprinting back and forth in the living room. I'm like, Ben, no, my room now. And then like my daughter like, like to be up. Yeah. And my daughter is just like yelling too. And I'm like, I, I literally just throw him in the room and just have him put on like YouTube kids. And I'm like, just, just be quiet. Just be quiet. <laughs> just give me an hour. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, just, just give, just give my wife an hour. And she's like up to like midnight and stuff like that. Like, it's funny. Cause we're complete opposites when it comes to sleeping. Cause like, I'll go mm -hmm. to bed early. No problem. Like 10 o'clock. She'll be up at like one o'clock in the morning, like watching TV. And I, I can't do that. Like I can't. It's like her, her probably just her time to decompress. Yeah. True. Just, yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, did you hear the news about, uh, what CrossFit, CrossFit, uh, CrossFit is doing with the, the layoffs? Uh, yeah, I saw that, but I, I mean, I don't know really any details about it. Yeah. So supposedly 20% of the whole company is getting cut. And do they have, like, they didn't really announce who or like which departments no, really. No, but, but supposedly Don Falls said it was not going to affect like the semifinals or anything like that. Interesting. Do you, did you have thoughts about that? Like originally that it could uh, affect kind of the game side of it? I, I, I thought so. I mean, because like, you don't know, like it might be like one of the higher level, like higher level guys of like a certain department that kind of branches off into like another department that actually affects, you know, the games or semifinals or like the judging or anything like that. Like there's, yeah, it's always like, you know, it always branches out. And I, I've actually noticed like in the recruiting world where a lot of companies are letting people go like, like thousands of people. And so, because they're like, just, just, I don't know if they call it trimming the fat, but they just don't have the budget for, right. you know, for more people to come in. And so I, I don't know, maybe it's just because like everything's going up in prices that they had to like start cutting ties or something like that. I don't, I don't know. But right. I, I don't, I, if he says it's not going to affect semifinals or the, the, the games, I'm like, I'm crossing my fingers. It, it doesn't, but we'll see yeah, what happens. I'm, I'm, I mean, I feel like they're pretty, I mean, fingers crossed but i hope that there is not another like last minute change like you know when glassman's like let's bring in all these national champions like that kind of stuff you know when it was just like where did this come from why like why is this an announcement why are we doing this why is this mm -hmm. happening yeah um like i every year has changed and it's like for the like for the love of god like let's have <laughs> one consistent year yep. from yeah. like one year to the next and see what happens mm -hmm. um even in like my college days when i was playing ice hockey um and like i had a, a coach change almost every single year and it was like it is so hard to keep up because you are constantly having to like either learn a new system or just learn the new dynamic with a coach and things like that whether it was a coach or an assistant coach and it's like it gets exhausting mm -hmm. um 
And then, you know, kind of looking back at these last two years or three years, they finally have had what looks to be like a consistent coaching staff. And here they are winning a national championship and kind of falling short by uh, one game in two years. Like, it's just incredible to see that, like, okay, what happens when you have the consistency and, you know, you get the players comfortable like that. And then that's where you see, you know, things happen. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, uh, my, my, yeah, my concern is like, I just, I don't know. I mean, I hope nothing happens to semifinals at all. I mean, that's, that's the main thing, especially with like judging and stuff like that. Yeah. So I feel like we're too close for that to happen at this point, right? Like we're less, we're three weeks away. So, I mean, that would cause, I think a big riff if they were to make any changes. Mm -hmm. So, well, the crazy, the crazy thing is most of these judges are all volunteers anyway. Yeah. Right. Right. And you got, yeah. And you also, and you also also got, yeah, they they definitely should get paid. (laughs) So, but, but the thing, and also the thing is, is like, I've, I've heard um, that like a lot of the volunteer, like if they're volunteering, they're like literally like spending thousands of dollars just to hotel rooms, traveling, Mm -hmm. whatever. And then like they get burnt out and they just, maybe some people don't even show up, you know? Yeah. That's interesting. I I guess I don't really know the backside, like logistics of what it is like to be a volunteer or just to be a judge at one of these higher level, uh, not even like one of these like CrossFit sanctioned, you know, semifinals or regionals when it was that. Um, I don't really know like the backside of that. I do know, like, I've heard some good and bad things about like being a judge at Wadapalooza and all that, but that's kind of a different entity. Yeah. You get a free pair of shoes. (laughs) <laughs> probably a t-shirt yeah you got a t-shirt that says judge so, uh, yeah si- sign me up so, so uh, uh, the people that do it i guess they do it for the love of it right like some of us like myself personally like i don't coach because i'm making a million dollars coach because i i love to see people get better i love to see you know athletes improving not just fitness but you know within their overall daily lives yeah. So you're, so you're not loaded. You're not loaded because you're coaching. <laughs> no, I wish. <laughs> so uh, with with the with the new semifinals uh, way they doing it with like the east and west and stuff like that. What what are your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, I guess I, I think thinking back to college, I've had to kind of roll with the punches every time there's a change, right? Um, so I I don't know. It looks like like North America is just a stacked field no matter which way you split it like any region any any way you cut it up it's probably going to be a stacked roster no matter what Mm -hmm. um so you know you just like I can't control what the other 59 girls are doing I can control what I'm doing and um am I in one of the stacked fields yes I am so um but I also know that I'm part of that stacked field so the way I look at others you know others are also looking at me um so, you know, that's kind of one of those things that I have to continue to remind myself is I have a lot of experience at this stage of the game um, and to use that to my advantage and to be confident in that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So uh, what's, do you have like a game plan of like, are you go, are you showing up there like a, a couple days earlier or like, how, how is that whole process going to work? Yeah. So, um, you know, getting my coaching schedule all rearranged and all that stuff we have, uh, some really great coaches back home to be able to kind of fill in the blanks where we need it. Um, So I I will go out on Tuesday and then Wednesday will kind of be like a, kind of like a freebie day. Like it's just, you know, Wednesday, there's nothing going on there. And then Thursday's registration. um, It'll also be like a primer day. So, you know, I'll hit some fitness and stuff like that. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, it's head down and compete and Monday I'll come right back home. Nice. Nice. So yeah, do, do you so. have a, do you have a hotel room that's close to the, the, the uh, convention center? Yeah. So I actually found um, a place on, I actually first found a place on Airbnb. Uh, it was like big enough to fit like 10 people. There's six of us that are staying in a room or, or staying in a house. Um, and then that place actually like last week, they just like immediately like canceled on me for no reason. Like they didn't really give a reason. Um, so I had to go on and find a new place. Um, so I found a place on VRBO that was actually cheaper and, uh, looks like the place was a little bit nicer. The amenities were nicer. Um, so we're about a mile away. Oh, that's not bad. bad. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, and a lot of it is within walking distance, but um, I think my mom wants to get a rental car too. So I, I already ordered a rental car, um, got us a nice little minivan so we can, you know, be, you know, all fancy driving around. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So the mini is the minivan getting prepared for like later on in life. So you can get like with the kids and stuff like that. <laughs> I will not drive a minivan. Hell <laughs> no. If he wants to get me like a, you know, a suburban or something like that, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, my my parents my parents used to drive a mini. Actually, my mom used to drive a minivan, and my I'm mom like, too. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, this thing's awful. So I mean, we had four kids, so I mean, you really had no choice to get something yeah, like that. Yeah, true. <laughs> I mean, minivans are like they're decked out, like they have space, but I will not drive a minivan. They're they're not cool. They're not cool. <laughs> so I remember I remember unless seeing you're it... rolling up to semifinals, then they're cool. Yeah, true, true. Well, I mean, I remember seeing a commercial of a minivan. I think it, I think it was a Chrysler minivan where like this this like purple like lights and smoke were coming out of the side, and all of a sudden like <laughs> like the door opened and like it was a flash of like a, a like a like a three D animation like Panther on there like trying to make it look sexy, and I'm like, you, it's not working. It's you just it's can't. not working. <laughs> yeah, and then I then I saw my neighbor have it, so and I'm like. Okay, it worked for you then. Sold. All right. <laughs> I was like, I can't, I can't do it. I, I, I can't. What do you and, guys drive? So my wife drives a uh, 2022 Ford Bronco. Nice. Is it like the original? Like there's different versions of the Bronco. Yeah. Right? So yeah. So she has the Outer Banks version. So it's kind of like the beach. It's almost like a beachcomber kind of deal. Yeah. Where like nice. the bigger tires. Like the sun, like the, um, she's got like a light bar on it. And then it's like all like, uh, like canvas, you know, a canvas top on it. And, cool. and, and the, the one problem is the light bar is just making so making like the canvas, like flap everywhere because of the wind. Cause it goes okay. under, it goes underneath and like makes like a, like literally everything starts hitting the each sound. other. Yeah, yeah. And it's like so annoying. <laughs> and I, I'm sitting there like, I don't even want to like drive in this thing. That's why I always tell, that's why I always say like, Oh, I'll drive. I'll drive. So, yeah. and I have, a, so I drive a, was it a 2022 Ford Maverick? Okay. So it's, wait, the it, Maverick is the EV? No, no, no. So no, it's, no, no. A, it's a truck. Yeah. It's a truck. It's like okay. the, it, they call it the F50. It's not the F150. Yeah. It's F50. So it's like a four cylinder, you know, pickup truck that it, like, it has a crew cab and it's like, it works. They, I, I, yeah. I, I love, I love the thing. I like, you know, we take, we take long trips down to Florida, like all the time in that thing. And like, okay. like literally pack the whole, pack the whole, like, right, uh, the bed up. Yeah. And yeah, it's, nice. you know, throw my, throw my gym bag in there with my shoes because they stink. And so it's just like, and it air it out and <laughs> just you don't constantly wanna... airs out. Yeah. Yeah. And so I don't want, I like, <laughs> cause originally I had a Nissan frontier and I, I kept my bag and my shoes in the car, in the truck. And it just stunk of like, just. <laughs> It was so bad. I was like trying to air it out, but I'm like at work in the in the parking lot. I'm like I'm not sticking this stuff out in the parking lot. <laughs> and so I'm just it gets stuck in there, and it's like 80, 90 degrees in the car. And so you could just my imagine gosh. like it, yeah, that's not pleasant. <laughs> no, no. So it's like my wife's like you you got to get something else. This is terrible. <laughs> so I got that. So I'm happy. You know that's probably gonna be my son's car when he gets older. So yeah. I'm, I'm How old is your son? He's seven. No, oh, he's got a long time. Yeah, trust me, I'm gonna keep that truck for a oh, very, very long I get time. It. So. We've had we've had a 2009 Honda CRV since 2009, and it still works. I don't even know how many thousands of miles it has. A couple hundred. Um, it's like on its last leg, but like we have that, and we have a, a 2014 Honda CRV. Like my, I don't know why. Like I will drive a Honda CRV for the rest of my life. I love how reliable they are. Um, but my brother has those now. And when COVID or like shortly after COVID, he was, so he's a state trooper and he was stationed in a county that's like an hour and a half away. Mm -hmm. So he always wanted to drive the beater. So he always drove one of those cars. And eventually he sold me his, he has a Hyundai Santa Fe. It was a 2020. So this was back then, like a year later. Um, he's like, I'll sell it to you for the price that I owe on it. So I took that off of him. So now nice. that's my car. Yeah. Nice. So, but he finally got stationed, uh, like locally. So he's going to finally probably look for a new car soon. He should, he should look for the Maverick. So they're, they're, they're <laughs> reasonably priced. So yeah, he, he has been 
he's changed his car so often it's actually not even funny like he's constantly trading it in for something else i'm like you might as well just lease it like just lease a car because then you get to change it every one or two years Mm -hmm. um he's had a nissan is it a is the frontier the truck yeah yep yeah he's had that before um he's had a volvo like and now i don't know what he'll get next i have no idea he's too unpredictable yeah, I, I had a I had a move to a pickup truck because I was working for like a roofing company for a little while. And so okay. I I had this Ford five hundred, which is like almost like a Ford Taurus. And mm-hmm. I was like fold I literally was throwing <laughs> this like fold up like um this fold up ladder in there. So what I would do is I would like put one of the uh one of the seat back seats down, throw the ladder in there, and he just like literally just scrape it the back. Sits- <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, just sits back there and I'm like, whatever. And my kid's like in the middle seat and he's like playing with it. And he's like, Hey, look at this thing. This thing's cool. But like, yeah, it was like tearing up the, tearing up the cloth in the back of the seat and stuff right. like that. And then, then the car shit the bed and I'm like, okay, I gotta get something else. And so literally got the knees on frontier and I'm like, I, I want to pick a truck. I, I don't want anything else. Yeah. So. They're versatile. Yeah. They're I handy. Mean, four, four, it was a four by four. It was high. It literally like from, my work to home, it was like almost like a quarter of a tank of gas both ways, <laughs> like one way and back. Yikes. It was like a quarter. I was just like, yeah, this has got to go. Yeah. So guzzlers. Yeah. No, no bueno. So, and it was like crazy. Cause like, I think I paid like, I think it was like, t- I think I took, took my retirement account. It was like 10 grand. I went to, uh, what was it? Um, oh, what was that company called? It was like a, a company. It was a car buyback place. And Carvana? so, yeah, that's, that it was like one of those places. I was like, yeah. uh, and so literally I got like 9,900 out of it. So like literally just only spent a hundred dollars on it for returned. And I, and I, like, it was like a year and a half later. That's not, nice. yeah. We actually sold Ben's old car on Carvana and he got a pretty good chunk of change for it, which we were surprised. So that's actually a good, like, and they come pick it up for you. Like you don't have to do anything. You sign a paper. Yep. And like, just they'll say, they'll give you a check. Like, here, here you go. See you later. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, but mine, mine was, uh, I actually, I, I did, I got the title and I guess I lost it or something like that. And so I had to get a new title. So I went to the title dealership and they're like, how many miles do you have on your truck? And I'm like, I don't know, like a 133,000. And they're like, okay. So they put it on there and the odometer was, I think like 10 or 20 miles less. And so I had to drive around the Carvana lot. Oh my gosh, for 20 miles. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So like literally I was like listening to a podcast and like, I think this was like exactly when like Dave Castro got fired too. Cause that's when like Savon did the podcast. So I'm like literally driving like a mile around, like the, like 20 laps around. And my wife's like so pissed. She's just like, I've been waiting here for like 45 minutes just for you to get to finish this. And I was like, sorry, I, I you know, I can't help it. My bad. Right. <laughs> so it was it, whatever it happens, but, um, that's funny. Yeah. It's the, the craziest things that I've done. It's, it's insane. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, so, um, with Simon finals, so what's the cutoff before people go to the, is it like 12 or, cause I know, I think they said, didn't they say like, if it was like a, a, a more of like a bigger stacked field, they'll let more people in. So what, what's the cutoff for the East yeah. coast? So East is, they have their equation that they use for, I think they start with the 2020 games or 2021 quarterfinals. I don't remember, or open. I don't remember where they have like their, their starting point for the uh, equation that they use, but um, they were, the prediction was going to be somewhere in like the 10 to 13 range for North America East, which it ended up being 11. So Mm -hmm. top 11 will go to the games. Okay. Okay. So um... yeah what what is your goal i obviously go to the games is the most important thing but like do you have like a set like you know goal that you like what place you want to hit there at all um not really like it's you know obviously like my goal is to qualify in the top 11 like whether it's first or 11th like the goal is the goal um it's hard to you know it's hard to predict against a field of athletes like i haven't competed against except whether it's at the games really at the games, I haven't really competed against a lot of the girls that are in uh, like this roster, like maybe, you know, two years ago or whatnot, but like a lot happens within a year or two years of progress for anybody. So Mm -hmm. it's like, it's hard to predict where you're going to sit in a, in a specific field of athletes. Um, When I was at semifinals last year, like my goal was to be top five in every event. So that was kind of like a, a way of, 
you know, I know maybe first place isn't in the cards or fifth place or whatever it is. Like I didn't care if it was first, second, third, fourth, or fifth. I, you know, my goal is to be top five in all the events. And I knew that that would be enough to qualify. Mm -hmm. Um, I had three events in the top five, three events where I was eighth. So overall the consistency was there. Um, and that's my main goal when I'm like getting, when I get to semifinals is to be as consistently high on the leaderboard as I can. Um, so not a particular placement. Um, I, I don't think that that kind of pressure is necessary to put on myself, but, um, I think, you know, at this point, people know that I am a competitor and that I am a threat on that field. And that's really all that matters. Um, so yeah, I am consistently looking to be as high as I can on leaderboard for every event. Yeah. Like, that's it. Yeah. And you don't, you don't want to be, you don't want to be 11th too, because the whole time you're like, oh shit. Yeah. Pressure. It's like even more pressure. Cause you like, you're like getting close to the end and it's just like, okay, I really need to send it on this thing. And then like, you yeah. blow, then you blow up and then like, you know, whatever else happens, you know, it's just, right. it's just a dumpster yeah. fire. Right. Like that's definitely, you know, part of it too, is you don't want it to come down to the last event. Like you want it. Um, like I want it to be a guaranteed I'm in that top 11. Yeah. But I mean, you can't, you can't predict how other people are going to, you know, play how the program is going to kind of affect it. So there's just too many unknowns. Yeah. So what do you think of all these like 16 year olds and 17 year olds, like coming into the, to, coming into the female Listen, category? I'm just here to keep the average age from dropping <laughs> too low. Okay. I'm 31. I'll be 32 if I make it, you know, when I make it to the games this year. So it's like, um, I think it's really awesome. Like, you know, in the grand scheme of it, take the, take the competitor out of me. I think it's so cool to see, you know, just how skilled these athletes are. Um, but I also, you know, on my side of it, like I'm at that upper age of like, I'm pushing, you know, I have to do a lot more things to stay healthy probably than they do. Mm -hmm. So, um, just it's a balancing act and it's, you know, the way, you know, a 19 year old recovers is not the way a 31 year old recovers. So, um, there's, there's a lot of, you know, there, there's been a lot of wisdom gained in all of these years too. So, um, a lot of learning lessons and figuring out what works and what doesn't and what keeps me healthy. Yeah. It's pretty much all they need to do is like pick up a barbell and just do the movement and then they're good yeah. to go. It's insane. They're like here it's 200 pounds. Okay. And me, I'm like, all right, hold on. I'll start at my 65 pounds and I will work my way up. <laughs> yeah. That, that's me. Like it's, it's so like, cause <laughs> w- w- what I do for the programming for misfit, I'll, I'll do the accessory work as a warm up. Okay. And then, and then after that, then I'll start doing some of the lifts or, or whatever, and then kind of go from yeah. there and then do the Metcon after it's like, I would love to do bitch work, but, um, I don't have, it, it's just too much time. Like I can't, yeah. I don't, I only have like a certain time to, to train and stuff, but like, that's, right. that's my warm up is the accessory work. Yeah. We, uh, so for me, ever since they kind of introduced the 15 minute sweat checks, mm-hmm. um, which really I think started with, you know, when they really started getting people into doing the mafetone sessions the way that they're meant to be done um kind of without the skill work that's involved right like when we would do all right 45 minutes on a machine at a forever pace but every five minutes you'd hop off and do a smooth set of strict handstand push-ups like once they got people to actually buy into doing just the mafetone and just getting on a machine for 45 minutes straight yep. um introducing the the 15 minutes of just building the heart rate I do not go a training session without 12 to 15 minutes on a machine. Like I just, it's, it's become such a non-negotiable now that I know for a fact that that is why number one, my training sessions will go well, but number two, that I'm also maintaining and staying healthy and keeping, you know, longevity in the sport, you know, up there for me. So, Mm. um, every event at a competition, every, you know, the, however many events I did at Wadapalooza, everything involved the sweat check, no matter what. Yeah. So, um, I try to get my athletes to buy into that. And, um, it's hard because like you said, like time is of the essence. You only have so much time in your training session, but for me, like nothing beats warming up. Like you can't, it, it's not a shortcut that I 
think is okay to take. Yeah. Not yeah, it, any shortcut isn't, but um, that's just one of them that like, if you're not warming up, you're not going to have as great of a session as you can. Mm -hmm. True. True. I mean, and then like you get one, like you're in like the fourth or fifth set of like a workout and then you're starting to feel like really good because you're officially warmed up now. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's those, that's those 4 a.m. feels right there. Yeah. Like I <laughs> there's been times like I get up and I'm like, ooh, this is going to be this is going to be rough. And like especially with like the three um, three sets of 12 back squats. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, all right. I got to like just slowly work my way and, like <laughs> just because because i'm 43 so it's less like it's even harder for me compared to yeah, you yeah i get it and so it's just like oh god like just just slowly just go down and hold the bottom position for a little while and like just do whatever you can to yeah. stretch out and stuff yeah do you do you um talk to people in discord are you on the app with the misfit athletics community i ch i try it's Okay. I'm it's, just curious. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. So it's, I try, but it's like really hard because it's once again, it's time because like I, yeah. I have, the, I have this, I have, you know, work. I'm like literally on kids. the phone. Yeah. Kids. <laughs> Excuse me. And then I literally have Bless to you. like, thank you. I literally have to call people on the phone for if they want a job or if they're looking okay. for a job. And so it's just like, I, the discord, like I literally have a discord notifications pop up like once in a while. Oh my God. Nuts. So, it's like all the time. It's like rapid up. fire. So it's just like, <laughs> I know. it's like, Oh wait, did someone text me? No, it's discord. Okay. So, but, <laughs> Which uh, is a, you know, a problem that I don't hate to see. Right. Yeah, like yeah. that it is an active community and it's pretty neat. Yeah. But I mean, a lot of people kind of, the reason I was bringing it up is, you know, that has been a way that we've seen people hold each other accountable. Like, did you do three minutes of an overhead squat hold? Did you, you know, sit in the bottom of a squat for five minutes today? Did you take an ice bath? Like, so it's just kind of neat. Like there's two ways you could go about that, right? Like either it motivates you to go do it or it stresses you out because you want to go do it, but you're not going to go do it. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see there's, there's two ways to look at that. And then I could see people stressing out. So they kind of like lie about their, their numbers and stuff. There's that too. Yeah. So uh I mean, but, the la the last time I posted was, I think it was last Friday. I think it was like the echo bike, like as fast as you can for like 20 seconds. And then you do like, yep. as, like the, whatever break you had. And I was like hitting like 1300 throughout the 20, I mean, correct. Cause I'm up cause I'm six, six. So it's not that hard. So, <laughs> uh, but like, it's rip on it. Yeah. I, oh gosh, I was going, I was going ham on that thing. And then like, I, it took me like three minutes to recover, to go back on it again. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, should I have gone a little slower and like less time to rest or, or whatever. But then like, like all the weightlifting numbers, they're, they're, they're pretty high up there. So it's just like, I don't want to, I'm not trying to like make myself a big head or anything like that, but I just don't want people to just be like, holy cow, this guy's lifting this. And then like, I should be lifting that or whatever. Well, I think, it, okay. So if you just to kind of play devil's advocate, like you, we actually, you know, just was looking at some stuff about this today. Like you are showing people what is possible. True. Like, so like, um, I just remember seeing a story from Alexis, uh, MF athlete, um, Alexis Johnson. And she was saying, she showed a picture of a piece in her Excel sheet, a training piece of like a, a skiing interval. And it said pacing, uh, beat Carol. So Caroline Connors, <laughs> Caroline yeah, Spencer, yeah, yeah. who is a, a fiend at skiing. Like she's got great pacing on it. Um, and Alexis was saying how that's like reading that is something that can feel defeating, but ultimately she uses it from a perspective of, well, okay, so Caroline's pacing is here. A year ago, my pacing was here, but now it's here. So this is me closing the gap and seeing the progress that I'm making to what I know is possible. Yeah. Um, so I think if you kind of shift the perspective of that, um, it's a lot more rewarding and can make, I don't know, possibly make you feel less like you are making other people feel down if that makes sense yeah yeah true true um, yeah so just yeah you know throw those numbers out there throw those you know people are gonna show you gymnastics sets and you're gonna be like what the fuck i can't do that oh i, I can't yeah you know? that, that's another thing i <laughs> suck i suck at them so bad like right i i haven't done handstand walks in like like almost like a couple months and like i just did it yesterday and yeah. 
I I was like maybe three fourths of what I what I can do, and I'm like sitting there like, this is awful. Like yeah. this is so a little bad. defeating. Yeah. But you know, it's there to show you what's possible, right? Matt Fraser is the fittest man on earth, and he is showing us what is like what people are capable of, and like that's, mm-hmm. you know, I just think it's a a little bit of a different perspective on it. Yeah. Yeah, and plus, like with my size, doing like chest bar pull ups, like one chest bar is like two for like you or like somebody else that's shorter. So it's like, <laughs> yes, it I'm is. Like, Our cycle time is gonna be a little bit faster. I'm like, I literally gotta like like touch the end of the end of the end of the bar <laughs> just to kind of just keep on going and stuff like that, just to just to catch up to you guys. It's just so hard. So even handstand push ups, it's just like it takes like a minute just for me to do one rep. Just get up to yeah, I get it. Or even even wall walks too. When when that when uh. That's gotta be rough. Yeah, when the wall walks first happened and came came in, I think I was talking to um I was watching the live feed for the Misfit Athletics when like Sherb and I think Hunter were training. And then uh and I was just like, I am so screwed on this. And like <laughs> and Drew's like, Yes, you are, Tom. He said that on the live stream. And then Ted's like, <laughs> and Ted oh, what happened? Uh, hold on. What happened? I don't know. Oh, my fate. Ugh, oh, there you are. Sorry. My, my GoPro just shit the bed. So awesome. All right. Um, anyway, so like literally like Ted was just like, oh, you'll be fine. And Drew's like, no, he's, he's not. Cause I'm sorry. He's not gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, they like know, to chirp every once in a while. Oh yeah. Which I'm perfectly fine about, which is whatever it, it happens. So yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's just like, okay, I need to work on all this stuff to get better. And so, and that's what I'm trying to do too. So it's not like, you know, I'm just focusing on just like the heavier weights or whatnot, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's all just, you know, I got to do everything. That's why I do the well, all, all around, you know, portion yeah. of the misfit. Yeah, I get it. So, but, um, we're getting close to the end because I got to get up stupid early. So, okay. yeah, uh, you do. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm actually, it's funny because I, I messaged you about, uh, changing time schedules because I had to be up early today. I, I have to be up early tomorrow too. So. Oh, boo, boo. Yeah, that's okay. Well, you could text me later. Just like when you wake up, like, Hey, I'm awake. So <laughs> <laughs> I will. I'll do that. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so I, obviously we did listener questions last year. Um, mm-hmm. so do you have, I know the goals are the CrossFit games or anything like that. So do you have any personal goals that you want to reach by the end of the year? Yeah. So after, you know, last year being at the games, kind of debriefing uh, with my coach, like, you know, looking at some of the events and stuff like that and looking back on it and being able to make those changes throughout this year of training. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, there's no reason that the top 15 is out of the question at the games or, you know, top 12 or, you know, top 10, like all those things are within reach, you know, with just a few adjustments and training and, um, you know, just, kind of still buying in and committing to the process of it. So no, like number one, the goal is to get back to the CrossFit games first. And then from there, like dial it in and get into that top 15. Like I nice. think that would just be, yeah. So kind of when he, when Gabe had said that, I was like, he's right. Like, why, why am I not, you know, sh- like wearing that confidence? Why am I not wearing that belief in myself? And yeah. Um, I started to, and then it's like, you know, kind of sharing things in discord with other athletes and just, you know, sharing scores or whatever it is. But it's like, you know, there's, I have to remind myself that like in discord, in that community, that like, I am one of those games athletes that people are looking up to. Um, and that matters like that, that confidence is there. Like it's, um, you know, just one of those things that I need to kind of be more expressive about, I guess, Mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm not a flashy person on social media. I'm not like, that's just never really, you know, kind of been a big thing for me. Um, You know, my value is just in putting in that hard work, whether it's in the shadows or, you know, on, you know, in the spotlight, whatever it is. So Yeah, yeah, you don't you don't want to Yeah, you you don't want to be Luca with his scores on the machines. Yeah, I know, right? I haven't <laughs> seen Luca in a long time. I don't know what he's up to. Well, he's probably killing it, so yeah. I know. He's it's... definitely head down in the shadows right now too. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, um I'll so, be looking forward to that. 
So do you have a favorite, do you have a book that you are reading right now at all? Um, I have been reading some like fictional books. So people are probably going to think this is kind of a, a goofy thing, but these are Serena Valentino came out with these villains books, like mm -hmm. Disney villains. Um, so I'm kind of in the middle of those, but, uh, those are more of like fictional that I'll read before bed. I had two books that I haven't gotten into yet. Um, I'm actually sitting here on my desk. One is called the big leap. And this was recommended by a friend of mine, uh, over at our gym. And then this was recommended by my coach, Gabe, the power of now. Mm -hmm. Um, and he said, when the time is right, you'll know when to start reading that book. So, um, it's actually kind of, you know, ironic that you're asking because the last couple of days I've been kind of looking at these and I'm like, I feel like the time is now, like, I'm probably going to start reading it soon. Yeah. Um, but I haven't dug into those yet. So those are going to be, uh, my next ones. Yeah. But lately I've been doing, like, I like to listen to podcasts. Um, most of them are either like a misfit athletics podcast. Um, again, I'm not biased or anything. Um, or like if I'm out on like a, a road trip, like going up to Maine or going to wherever Ben and I listen to like the cinematic podcast. So it's like a movie, but in a podcast form, mm -hmm. um, we get into those kinds a lot. There's a, a podcast company called Q code that has a lot of them. So if anyone's interested in something like that, Q code. Okay. Okay. So yeah. do, do you like those like murder mystery like serial killer kind of stuff i do gosh I do. Why, why do all girls like that <laughs> i don't know i i love law and order svu um law and order like all of that i love criminal minds blue bloods i love that kind of stuff yeah i don't know why but i could sit and binge watch a whole season of it easily is it because you're trying to find ways if ben does something to you he could, he could just find ways of just to kill him no, off i actually do it so i can you know if any of my friends ever need help you know they have they have help gotcha gotcha <laughs> <laughs> um is it is there anything new in your gym bag at all or um no so let me think not really i recently um actually rx mark here did send me out some of the uh um the beaded rope. Okay. And they sent me like a nice, a new Evo go rope, which is really awesome. So that was a uh, kind of a surprise. I, I asked them like, you know, if I could possibly get anything. And then they sent me in addition to that, some of the Alex Smith uh, gymnastics grips, but they're like fingerless and they don't yeah. have anywhere. Like they just flap down. So I haven't gotten myself to try them out yet. Cause um, I'm, I like victory grips a lot. I was just so, going to say that I, I was wondering, I'm like, are you going to verge away from victory grips? No, I, I don't know if I can. Um, you know, you just, you get so used to something and it works like why, why, why try to change it at that point? Yeah. Um, so nothing totally new. Okay. Okay. What about you? Anything uh, new that you've been like really liking? Glucose tabs, uh, for my low blood sugar. Uh, <laughs> always have to restock those. Um, I got a tripod. So I originally I was like trying to do use actually use this, use the GoPro to do like vlogging at the gym because there's, mm -hmm. there's times I'm at the gym and there's like nobody there, nobody yeah. there. And so I'm like, maybe I'll do a vlog or something like that. So I use a tripod for like posting the, you know, my lifts or just like recording my lists and stuff like that. Um, let's see what else I think that's for, Oh yeah. And a timer. So I got like this like little hand timer. Mm -hmm. It's like probably like, like that big. And is I'll it just, like a magnetic? It can stick to the rig. Yep. Yeah, it was I've like heard those are pretty sweet. It was like fifty bucks, and I was just like, "All right, whatever. I'll just try it out." I, <laughs> I love it. Things great. Yeah. So yeah, that comes in handy, especially if like you're in a twenty-four hour kind of place, like you know, can't all use the clock at the same time. No, I mean either that I'll use my phone or something like that. But I'm like, well, I'm gonna want to videotape this, so I got to figure out something else to use. Yeah. So this, that's it. So <laughs> I mean, that's that's the really the only two things that I had. So, but uh, okay. Yeah, that's really it. So pr yeah. pretty, pretty boring. So, yeah, same. Yeah. I don't change a lot of things if I don't need to. Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> right. So, uh, all right. So the last question. So where can people reach out to you if they have any questions regarding like, you know, remote coaching, joining Misfit, you know, maybe going to semifinals of the games? Where can they reach, reach out to you? Yeah, so 
Um, they can reach me at page underscore Semenza on Instagram. That's my handle. Um, if they want to reach out, I mean, they can ask me anything on there, whether it's misfit related, semis related. Um, if they wanted to get contact, I could send them contact information for uh, like misfit athletics, remote coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd be happy to do that. And then they would be directed over to um, someone with misfit athletics. So Jen does a lot of the behind the scenes stuff and I would direct them over to her and get them on the list. There is awesome. a wait list for, for remote coaching. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the other thing of like, when I hear that, like, I want to take on another athlete, but you know, again, I want to be able to give them the time that they deserve when it comes to, to remote coaching because they deserve the attention. And, yeah. you know, I, I don't want to not give that. Yeah. So, that's after, um, that's after the games. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I have, I have a good group of athletes right now though, and they are super like, I, you know, they, they want to get to this level too. So they understand that there are kind of, you know, some checks and balances when it comes to certain times of the year, they're like, you know, semifinals, like I won't be communicating with them as much, you mm-hmm. know? So there are times of the year where there's a, an understanding there and, they're, they're, you know, I tell them ahead of time as well. So there's, it's communicated. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that. If you want to head over to sharpen the ax, uh, code.com to get some clothes, you can use code page. If you want to head over to proper fuel code.com, uh, for some of the best supplements in the game, that's another one. You can use code page. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm wearing the misfit athletic slate shorts. So these things are the best yeah, like a lot of people like them yeah i don't so to be honest with you like i i have like a couple of nike shorts and like i all i wear is like misfit athletic shorts that's <laughs> that's it like, yep. that, that's it. i am i'm super excited like you know the men's side is all figured out but like women like we can be you know all over the, all place. Over the place when it comes to leggings like material all that kind of stuff and last i had spoke with jen she was saying that they're coming out with some stuff for semifinals. Nice. Uh, with leggings and stuff. So I'm excited. Now, yeah. can you can you tell Jen to get the coach's pants a little bit longer so like people <laughs> like 6'6 six, six can wear them? Oh, so, well, you just got to wear the high socks so that they are like right at no, the legs no. are still too long. They're still, still too, too short. short. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Like I, I, got the, I got the maroon ones. So real quick, sorry, I got the maroon ones. And uh, <laughs> I put them on and I'm like, oh, these are really short. And I look, I go to my wife, I'm like, what do you think about these? And she's like, absolutely not. Like these are way <laughs> too short for you. And like, so they're just like three quarter pants. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't, I, I can't mean, that's pull, a thing. I can't pull that off. <laughs> I can't, I can't pull that off. So All right, that's just, fair. Just tell her to make them a little bit longer. So, <laughs> they're going to have to come out with a special sizing for you. I, I know. Well, even, even the joggers too, like I'll wear them and it's almost looks like spandex on me. <laughs> like it's, it's hilarious because like I went to a soccer game and I had the blue joggers on, and my wife's like, "Those are really really short on you, like Those really really there. tight. Those are really tight." And I'm like, "Yeah, but I really like them though." And she's like, "Yeah, you either gotta pull them up a little bit or hinge them down or do both. Like you can't like you <laughs> can't both. go yeah you can't go out in public with that thing." So. <laughs> oh, that's hysterical. Yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm whole, actually. Are you going to Misfit Camp? at all or uh i'm not sure okay so um i haven't talked to, to to jen or drew or anybody yet uh there will be like a misfit like mock games week uh for the athletes uh in general and i think mm. that comes after okay camp but we also our gym at home our owner um there's a, a big vacation that they're taking the Turks and Caicos and that will be, I think right around that time. Okay. So I don't know if I can balance both. Cause I will have to take like more I'll classes, have some extra yeah. responsibilities here. Yeah. So, um, I haven't gotten that far yet. I'm like, when it comes to the game season, I'm really not good at planning things out further than what comes next. So like, mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm not past semifinals yet. Like I haven't thought, I haven't committed to anything past that yet because it could change. Like if I make the games, when I make the games. Yes. Yes. True. Um, yes. Like trying to plan a vacation or anything after that, like that's, 
you know, that's not the priority. Like planning for the games is the priority. And then if there's time to be able to squeeze something else in, then that will come in. But if I weren't to make the games, like that kind of opens up these next couple of months. So um, yeah, like semifinal, that's where we're at. Yep. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> Well, well, thank you for coming on the show. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, you, know, thanks, Tom. you know, just shooting the breeze and, you know, make sure you tell Ben that you need to get those daily massages and those certain I... areas that you need help on. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. You're always a pleasure to talk with. Awesome. We'll talk to you later. Okay. All right. See ya. Bye.